Put your thinking caps on. We got a deep discussion ahead of us. Let's go. Y'all see the subscribe count right there, man. We are posting every single day, going up every single day. Let's get into this reaction, man. Jordan Peterson, talk to me. Jordan Peterson, you've said that men need to quote. All right, all right, real quick, we're going to talk about what the video is. It's Jordan Peterson talking about the gender pay gap. Obviously, gender, boy and girl pay gap, how much somebody gets paid. Let's see how the uh, discussion develops. Let's go. Throw the hell up. Tell me why. Well, because there's nothing uglier than an old infant. There's nothing good about it. it. People who don't grow up don't find the sort of meaning in their life that sustains them through difficult times, and they are certain to encounter difficult times. I think that's and true. They're left bitter and resentful and without purpose and adrift and hostile and resentful and vengeful and arrogant and deceitful and, and of no use okay. to themselves and of no use to anyone else and no partner for a woman. And there's nothing in it that's good. So you say, I mean, that sounds pretty bad. You're saying it's there's a bad. crisis of masculinity. I mean, what do you do about it? You tell, you help people understand why it's necessary and important for them to grow up and adopt responsibility. Why that isn't a shake your finger and get your act together sort of thing. Why it's more for like, sure. why it's more like uh, a delineation of the kind of destiny that makes life worth living. I've been telling mm, you. Okay, hold on. He, we, like I said, put your thinking caps on. He used a big word, the delineation of the destiny of your life worth living, man. Okay, we use a big words today. I really want to hear him speak. He He's speaking some real stuff. Hold but on. It's not, I wasn't specifically aiming this message at young men to begin with. It just kind of turned out that way. I'm and the young mostly, man. You admit it's mostly men listening. I mean, it 90% is. of your audience is a man, Well, it's right? about 80%. And I'll say this. I've never seen a Jordan Pearson video before this. Now, I might have reacted to a video that y'all might have sent me, but I do not remember. It was probably like a year or two ago if I did react to it. Also, I've never seen him, his name that much before. I don't know what Jordan's Pe what Jordan Peterson's ideology is. I have no idea. So I'm coming into this video clean slate. Let's see what he's talking about. And I'll let you know if I agree or not. You know what I'm saying? On, on my, YouTube, my, my thoughts. Is a, YouTube is a male domain primarily. So it's hard to tell how much of it is because YouTube is male and how, how much of it is because of what I'm saying. But um, you you what I've been telling young men is that there's an actual reason why they need to grow up, which is that they have something to offer, you know, that, that, that people Thanks. have within them this capacity to set the world straight and that's necessary to manifest in the world. And that also doing so is where you find the meaning that sustains you in life. So what's yes. going wrong? Oh my God, I ain't gonna lie. As a young man myself and as a young black man in America, that just touched me like heavily because i know that myself as a young man i have to work hard if i want to be something in the later years of my life but i see my counterparts and i see the people that's around me and they not working hard they're kind of lazy they slouching and i know in the end they're not probably going to have the responsibility that they thought they might have or to live the life that they thought they might live because they're not putting in that work and not gaining that responsibility doing the things that jordan peterson is saying right now i ain't gonna lie i'm feeling what he's saying y'all let me know if he's wrong but i'm feeling what he's saying well, that, that I'm yes. working hard, People man. I'm 19. I'll let y'all know my age. To set the world straight and that's necessary to manifest in the world. And that also doing so is where you find the meaning that sustains you in life. So and I'm, I'm finding that meaning right now, man. Oh, God. All sorts of things have gone wrong. I, I think that I don't think that young men are hear words of encouragement. Some some of them never in their entire lives, as far as I can tell. That's what they tell that's me. True. And the fact that the words that I've been that I've been speaking, the YouTube lectures that I've done and put online, for example, have had such a dramatic impact is an indication that young men are starving for this sort of message because like, why in the world would they have to derive it from a lecture on YouTube? You know, young men are looking for the pers for the person, I guess I could say, just like, that's why people are gravitating toward, towards Andrew Tate. If you don't like Andrew Tate, you have to at least understand why people are gravitating towards him. And I ain't gonna put my feelings out there about Andrew Tate, because I know that he's being, um indicted on some very serious charges he'd be indicted on very serious charges but people that are following his ideology and following probably jordan peterson's ideology are the people that never had that father figure growing up never had that person that was able to tell them right from wrong or tell them no you shouldn't do this maybe you should do this never gave them the example to lead off of you know what i'm saying so they follow the internet the internet has really changed the world i want people to understand the internet is changing the world every single day so it's forming people's minds 
It's forming people's minds to live off other people's ideologies. And it's just like this, man. That's why I think you got to you have to really formulate your own opinions. You can listen to me. You can watch me all day. But if you're not formulating your own opinions based off of what I'm saying, then you're not living right. If you're just being subject, if you're not being subjective and you're just blindly following everything I'm saying, I really don't even want you to watch me because that's not a real human. I see you're a bot. Like, why in the world would they <laughs> you're have a bot. to derive it from a lecture on YouTube? Now they're not being taught that they that it's important to develop yourself. But does it does it bother you that your audience is predominantly male? Does that isn't isn't that a bit divisive? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's no more divisive than the fact that YouTube is primarily male and Tumblr is primarily well, that's pretty well, divisive, female, isn't it? Mm. Tumblr is primarily female. But you're just I saying that's that. the way it is. Well, it's I'm not saying anything. It's just an observation that that's the way it is. Um, there's plenty of women that are watching my lectures and coming to my talks and buying my books. It's just that the majority of them happen to be men. Uh, it's what's I, in it for the women, though. That's so a good question. Sort of you want? Uh, it's what's I, in it for the women, though. Well, what sort of partner do you want? You want to okay, Jordan Peterson. That's what I'm. Okay, if we're talking about you also making content or making lectures and things that are for the women, you can't just say that you don't understand why your audience is predominantly male and then you say that the female only get what type of men they want out of it. That means your content is only made for men. The female aren't getting that much out of it except for men advice. You know what I'm saying? Some women don't want to live off a of man. They want to live off their own stuff. They want to be individuals off their own. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't agree with that What's one. What's in it for the women though? It's a great question. Well, what sort of partner do you want? You want an overgrown child? Or do you want someone to contend with that's going to help you? And so you're you saying on? women have some sort of duty to sort of help fix the crisis of masculinity? Well, it depends on what no. they want. Well, no, it does I mean, depend. It's, it's, it's exactly, exactly. It's all about, about, about perspective. I'm sorry for pausing. I'm, it's all about perspective. I'm not pausing. what no they more. want. No, it's a good video. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly, exactly how I laid it out. Like, uh, women want, deeply want, men who are competent and powerful. And, and I don't mean power in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that they can exert tyrannical control over others. That's not power. That's just corruption. Power Thanks. is competence. And why in the world would you not want a competent partner? Well, I, I know- Power is much. knowledge. You can't dominate a competent pow partner. So, so if you want women domination- want to dominate, is that what you're saying? No, I'd say women who have had their relationships impaired with impaired their relationships with men. Oh, hold on, 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 hold on. Did she got him stumbling? Jordan Peterson, I've never seen you act like this. So you're if you want women domination. Want to dominate, is that what you're saying? No, I'd say women who have had their relationships impaired with, impaired, their relationships with men impaired and who are afraid of such relationships will settle for a weak partner because they can dominate them. But it's a suboptimal solution. Do you think that's what a lot of women good. are doing? I think there's a substantial minority of women who do that. And I think it's very bad for them. They he answered the questions. It's very bad for their partners. Although the partners in a very good, safe way, to take any responsibility. But what gives you the right to say that? I mean, maybe that's how women want their relationships, those women. I mean, you're making these vast generalizations. I'm a clinical psychologist. Right, so you've, you're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men. I well, said you, it was a bad long-term solution. Okay, you said it was it's making the them miserable. Thing. Yes, it is. And it depends on the time frame. I mean, there can be, there's intense mm. pleasure in momentary domination. That's why people do it all the time. But it's no formula for a long-term, successful long-term relationship. That's reciprocal. So what he's saying is the woman shouldn't dominate the man? Is that what he's saying? Any long-term relationship is keep reciprocal. Up. Virtually by definition. So. Let me put a quote to you from the sure. book. Where you say, there are whole disciplines in universities forthrightly hostile towards men. These are the areas of study dominated by the postmodern stroke neo-Marxist claim that Western culture in particular is an oppressive structure created by white men to dominate and exclude women. Hmm? But then I want to put Minorities to you... too, who dominate and exclude Okay, minorities sure. Women. But I want to put to you that here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example, the gender pay gap stands at just over 9%. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. You've got only seven wow. women running the top FTSE 100 companies. Yeah. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded, to quote your words back to you. It does seem that way, but 
multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. But that's just oh, not do, true, is it? I mean, that 9% true. pay gap, that's a gap between median hourly earnings yeah. between men and women. But that yeah. exists. Yeah, but there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not the only reason. Like, if you're Talk a social about it. scientist, Talk about worth, it. worth your salt, you never do a univariate analysis. Like, yeah. you say, well, women in aggregate are paid less than men. Okay, well, then we break it down by age, we break it down by occupation, we break it down by interest, we break it down by personality. But you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top because that's what's skewing that gender pay gap, isn't it? You're saying, well, that's just a fact of not life. Women it aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top. No, I'm not saying it doesn't matter either. You're saying I'm it's saying a fact there are of multiple life. reasons for it. Yeah, but those reasons why... Into... Okay, it seems like they're kind of arguing some of the same points, but Jordan is kind of saying that there's multiple different reasons and she's trying to make him stand on his one point. Why you know should women put up with those reasons? Why should, Why should women, women be content not to get I'm not, not saying that they should the put up with it. I'm saying that the claim that the wage gap between men and women is only due to sex is wrong. And mm. it is wrong. Mm. There's no doubt about that. The multivariate analysis have been done. So well, I, I can give you, you an you example. Keep on I can agree with that. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gap between 9 men and women. 9% is a I'm lot. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. Yeah. Now, yeah, if you're a woman, that seems pretty unfair. Yes, I agree. I agree. Why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair? If you're a woman... Not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid 9%. Do you have to say why it exists? If it does exist, though, because the fact that it does exist means that it's already a problem. You know what I'm saying? So do we have to talk about why to explain the fact that it is? You know, I, I, don't, I don't think we now, do. But you I think we have to just figure out the problem. Pretty unfair. You have to say why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair? If you're a woman... Not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid 9% less than a man. That's not fair, is it? It depends on why it's happening. I can give you an example. Okay. Give There's me an example, because I don't understand. Agreeableness. agreeable people are compassionate and polite. And agreeable people get paid less than, dis than less agreeable people for the same job. Women are more agreeable than men. Again, a vast generalization. Some Ah, uh, I don't know. Well, they're not more agreeable than yes, men. that's true, but that's right. And some women get paid more than men. So you were saying that by and large, women are too agreeable to get the pay rises they I'm, deserve. No, I'm saying that that's one component of a multivariate equation that predicts um, salary. It accounts for maybe five percent of the variance, something like that. So surely so you the need answer. About another 20, you need about another eighteen factors, one of which is gender. And there is prejudice, there's no doubt about that, but it accounts for a much smaller proportion of the variance in the pay gap than the radical feminists claim. Okay, so rather than denying the pay gap exists, which is what you did at the beginning of this conversation, shouldn't you say to women, rather than being agreeable and not asking per, for a pay rise, go and ask for a pay rise. I, Make yourself disagreeable with your boss. Facts, that's... I ain't gonna lie. I applaud this lady right here. She's making good points. And she's very, she's very, like, she's, her kind of arguments to him are impressive. I like that. At the beginning of this conversation, shouldn't you say to women, rather than being agreeable and not asking for, for a pay rise, go and ask for a pay rise. I, Make yourself disagreeable with your boss. Oh, definitely. There's that. But I also didn't deny it existed. I denied it existed because of gender. Mm. Okay. See, because okay. I'm very, very, very careful with my words. Very careful. So the pay gap exists. You accept that. But you're yes. saying, I mean, the pay gap between men and women exists. But you're saying it's not because of gender, it's because women are too agreeable to ask for pay rises. So it's make one them, of the reasons. Okay, one of the reasons. So why not get them to ask for a pay rise? I've Wouldn't that be a fair way of proceeding? I've done that many, many times in my career. And they just I've don't. Oh, they do it all the time. You can, it's, so one of the things that you do as a clinical psychologist is um, assertiveness training. So you might say, often you treat people for anxiety. <clears throat> you treat them for depression. Um, and you, and, and maybe the next most common category after that would be assertiveness training. And so I've had many, many women, extraordinarily competent women in my clinical and consulting practice. And we've put together strategies for their career development that involve continual pushing, competing for higher wages, mm. and often tripled their wages within a five year period. Well, if he's putting in that wages. work, of course. If he's putting in that work to help the women get higher wages, then I can commend him because that's good. You know so, what I'm saying? Do you, do you agree that you would be happy if that pay gap was eliminated completely? It because that's depend. all the radical feminists are saying. It would depend on how it was eradicated and how the, how, how the disappearance of it was measured. And you're These saying if it's at the cost of men, that's a problem. 
oh, there's all sorts of things that it could be at the cost of. It could even be at the cost of women's own interests. So Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. No, because it might interfere with other things that are causing the pay gap that women are choosing to like do. Like having well, children. Well, or choosing careers that actually happen to be paid less, which mm. women do a lot of. But why shouldn't women have the right to choose not to have children or the right to choose they, those they, demanding careers? They do. They can. Yeah, that's fine. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large. I'm saying that that... No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I, and I actually haven't said that so far You're saying program. it makes them miserable. No, I said that what was making them miserable was having part was having weak partners. What the lady does is she uses some of his points and kind of goes into another point and then he'll be like, no, I didn't say that because it's actually this specific thing and then he'll flip it back around. So they kind of be arguing the same thing, but then he'll flip it and she'll flip. This like, it's, this is a very that brainiac conversation. It's right. a brainiac conversation. I would say that many women around the age of, I would say between 28 and 32 have a career family crisis that they have to deal with. And I think that's partly because of the foreshortened time frame that women have to contend with. Like women have to get the major pieces of their life put together faster than men, which is also Facts. part of why men aren't under so much pressure to grow up. So Facts. because for the typical woman, um, she has to have her career and family in order pretty much by the time she's 35, because otherwise the options start to run out. And so that puts a tremendous amount of stress on women especially at the end of their 20s. I think I take issue with the idea of the typical woman because, you know, all women are different. And that's why I want to just put another quote to you from the book. Well, you they're say, different in some ways and the same in others. OK, you say women become more vulnerable when they have children. Oh, yes. And you talked in one of your YouTube interviews about crazy harpy sisters. So, simple question. Is gender equality a myth in your view? Is that something that's just never going to happen? It depends on what you mean by equality. No, Being if you mean fairly, men and women, getting the same opportunities. Fairly, people, we could get to a point where people were treated fairly or more fairly. I mean, people are treated pretty fairly in Western culture already, but we can. Well, they're really that. not, though, are they? I mean, otherwise, well, why would there only be seven women running FTSE 100 companies in the UK? Mm. Why, why would there still the be UK a pay right gap, now. which okay. we've discussed well, that's easy. at length? That's easy why are women at the BBC question. saying that they're getting? paid illegally less than men to do the same job. Well, let, That's not fair, well, is let's it? Let's go to the first question. They're, well, those are complicated questions. Seven, seven women, re repeat that one. There's seven women seven. running the top FTSE 100 companies in the UK. Okay. Well, the I first, mean, the first question might be, um, why would you want to do that? Well, why would a man, man want to do it? Oh. I well, mean, there's there a lot are, of money, a it's certain, an interesting there's job. There's a certain you know? number of, of men, although not that many, who are perfectly willing to sacrifice virtually all of their life to the pursuit of a high-end career. So mm. they'll work. These are men that are very intelligent. They're usually very, very conscientious. They're very driven. They're very high energy. They're very healthy. There's so, there are so many females like that too. Or 80 hours a week, nonstop, specialized at one thing to get to the top. So you're saying women are just more sensible. They don't want that because it's not a nice life. Well, I'm saying that's part of it, definitely. And so I work so you, for- So you don't think there are barriers in their way that prevent them getting to the top oh, of those Oh, there are companies. some barriers, yeah. Like other, like men, for example. I mean, to get to the top of any organization is an man. incredibly competitive enterprise. Yeah. And the men that you're competing with are simply not going to roll over and say, please take the position. That's but a fact. Back That's a fact. All That's out a fact. Warfare. Is gender I agree equality with that. a myth? Ooh. I, I don't know what you mean by the question. Men and women aren't the same, and they won't be the same. That is it real or fake, bro? Fairly. Is gender equality desirable? If it means equality of outcome, then almost certainly it's undesirable. That's already been demonstrated in Scandinavia. Because in Scandinavia... What do you mean by that? Equality of outcome is undesirable. Well, men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories if you leave them alone to do it off their own accord. I've mm. already seen that in Scandinavia. It's 20 to so... 1 female nurses to male, something like that. It might not be quite that extreme. And approximately the same male engineers to female engineers. Now, That's one of the best things he said this whole interview. They men and women probably won't sort themselves out into the same categories that they just allowed themselves to. If they if we got to choose and we just did it what did what we wanted to, we most likely wouldn't be in the same categories anyway. That's a I, 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 I agree with that. Free choice of men and women in the societies that have gone farther than any other societies to make gender e equality the purpose of the law. Those are ineradicable differences. You can eradicate them with tremendous social pressure and tyranny. 
But if you leave men and women to make their own choices, you will not get equal outcomes. Right, so you're saying that anyone who believes in equality, whether you call them feminists, call them whatever you want to call them, should basically give up because it ain't going to happen. Only if they're aiming at equality of outcome. So you're saying give people equality of, of opportunity, that's fine. It's not only fine, it's eminently desirable for everyone, for individuals and for society. But still women aren't going to make it, that's what you're really it saying. It depends on your measurement techniques. They're doing just fine in medicine. In fact, there are far more female physicians than there are male physicians. There are, there are lots, of, uh, lots of disciplines that are absolutely dominated by women. Many, many disciplines. And they're doing great. So... Let me put something else to you from the book. You say, the introduction of the equal pay for equal work argument immediately complicates even salary comparison beyond practicality mm -hmm. for one simple reason. Who decides what work is equal? It's not possible. So the mm -hmm. simple question is, do you believe in equal pay? Well, I made the argument there. It's like it depends on so who defines it. So you don't believe it. in equal pay? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. Because a lot of um, people listening to you will just say, I mean, are we going back to the That's because they're actually here? not listening. They're I'm listening just very carefully, and I'm think. hearing I, I, you basically I saying women need to just accept they're never going to make it on equal terms, equal outcomes is what, how you defined it. No, I didn't say that. If I was a young woman that equal... watching that, I would go, well, I might as well just go and play with my Cindy dolls and give up trying that. at school because I'm not going to get the top job I want. That's why I said that earlier she kind of goes and makes her own assumptions off of the things he says and he's like no i didn't i'm not saying that i'm saying this and then she'll be like okay if you're saying that then you're basically saying this but it's not that and that's why it's kind of wacky her arguments are kind of getting a little loose you know what i'm saying no i didn't if say if i was that, a young I woman equal... watching that i would go well i might as well just go and play with my cindy dolls and give up trying that. at school because i'm not going to get the top job i want if because you actually someone's listen saying it's not possible i said it's not that desirable, equal it's outcomes are desirable that's what I said. It's a, it's a yeah, bad it's social desirable. goal. I didn't say that women shouldn't be striving for the top or anything like that, because I don't believe that for a second. Striving for the top, but you're going to yeah. put all those hurdles in their way, as has been in their way for centuries, no. and that's fine. You're saying no, that's no. fine. No, no, I think I really the think that's... The patriarchal system I really is just that's fine. silly. I do. I think that's silly. I really do. I mean, look, take look that at sip your of water or not, buddy. You're hardly unsuccessful. Yeah, and I have battled How do you quite manage? hard to get exactly. where I've got to. Good so that's you. okay. Battling is good. This is all it's about the inevitable. fight. inevitable. But you talk about men why, fighting. Why I mean, let me just put have... another thing to you from the book. Why You're saying you have to real... battle for a high-quality position? Well, I notice in your book you talk about real conversations between men containing, quote, an underlying threat of physicality. Oh, there's no doubt about that. What about real conversations between women? Is that something, or are we sort of too amenable and reasonable? No, it's just that the domain of physical conflict is sort of off-limits for you. Well, you just said that I've fought to get where I've got. Yeah, but... What does that make me? Well, I don't a proxy man or something? I don't imagine that you... Yeah, to some degree. I suspect you're not very agreeable. So that's the thing. Successful women... I'm not very agreeable. Right. But I've successful... noticed that, actually, in this conversation. <laughs> At least and I'm sure it served well. your career well. Successful women, though, mm -hmm. basically have to wear the trousers, in your view. They have to sort of become men to succeed, is what you're saying. Well, if they're going to... I've had to fight to succeed, if therefore, I'm an ordinary man. If they're going to compete against men, certainly, masculine traits are going to be helpful. I mean, one of the things I do in, in my counselling practice, for example, when I'm consulting with women who are trying to advance their careers, is to teach them how to negotiate and to, and to be able to say no and to not be easily pushed around and to be formidable. And you need to... If you're going to be successful, you need to be smart, conscientious and tough well here's a mm. radical idea i'm not gonna lie bro if you're really listening to the things he's saying and like i said before you can't listen to everything everybody's saying and just blindly follow you have to formulate your own opinions off of what they're saying like okay maybe that makes a little bit of sense nah that right there don't make sense at all he's tripping you see what i'm saying you got to make your own opinions based off of what they're saying and i agree with what he just said right there bro like if you want to be I, I i'm not a successful person i feel like in my life i've done successful things and i've able to be successful in certain parts of my life but overall i haven't i haven't been the haven't had the successful life you know what i'm saying and i feel like this man has probably had success in his life that can create you know generational wealth something that i would like to do and i feel like he is leading people if you really want to be in that mindset he's teaching you that and i believe say that. no firmly not be easily pushed around and to be formidable and you need to if you're going to be successful you need to be smart 
conscientious and tough. Well, here's I believe idea. that. Why don't the bosses adopt some, the male bosses, shall we say, some adopt feminine. some female traits so I that knew she women was don't say that have one. to fight and get their sharp elbows out for the pay rises? But it's just like, you can't say that in this world based off of the past already. The past made the past how it is now. Just like white people are in power against, like he said, the women in my uh, in minorities, the white uh, the men are in power against the the females. It's just how the world has been set up from the past already. We can't change the past. What we can do is try to change the future and help the future and try to build more women up like he's doing i believe he is doing that building more women up to be tougher be stronger be more formidable you see what i'm saying say no more you know be able to negotiate better and in the future if women are able to do that then we're able to change the world you know what i'm saying the more few more, more females are going to be in power and going to be at them top change you know what i'm saying it's just i accepted. believe that if they're doing the same job they get the same pay well, I would say partly because it's not so easy to determine what constitutes the same job. I don't that's really... because, arguably, yeah. there are still men dominating our industries, our society, and therefore still they've is. dictated the terms for so long that women have to battle to no, be like the men. It's, it's not right. It's not right. It's not true. We so can agree it's not right. Well, I can give you a, an example very quickly. So I worked with women who worked in high-powered law firms in Canada for about 15 years. And they were as competent and put together as anybody you would ever meet. And we were trying to figure out how to further their careers. And there was a huge debate in Canadian society at that point that was basically ran along the same lines as your argument, is that if the law firms didn't use these masculine criteria, then perhaps women would do better. But the market sets the damn game. It's like... And the market is dominated by men. No, it's so not. I'm it's not. The market is dominated by women. They make 80% of the consumer decisions. Mm. That's not the case what? at all. If you're talking 80%. about people who stay at home looking after children, by and large, they are still women. So they're going out doing the shopping. But that is changing. They make all Can the what consumer I want to ask decisions. You? Okay, so the what market I want to ask is driven you. by okay. women, not men. It like, is. Okay, and if you're a lawyer... And they still Canada. pay more for the same sort of goods. That's been proven. That men, for the... You buy a blue bicycle helmet is going to cost less than a pink one. Anyway, we'll come on to that. It's partly because men are less agreeable. <laughs> right, so, the, so they won't put up with it. I want to ask you. Is yeah, this conversation is wild. Some of those female traits you're talking about, I'd say that's a generalization, but you've used mm -hmm. the words female traits. Is it not desirable to have some of them at the top of business? I mean, maybe there wouldn't have they been don't a, predict a, a success. banking crisis. They don't predict happened. success in the workplace. The things that predict success in the workplace are intelligence and conscientiousness. Agreeableness negatively predicts success. In Which the is workplace. unisex. And so, so does high that, negative emotion. You're saying that women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No, I didn't say that at all. You said that... Uh... Did he say that? <laughs> I don't think he said that one. Agreeableness negatively predicts success in the workplace. So and so does high that, negative emotion. You're saying that women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No, I didn't say that at all. You said that... <laughs> Female traits don't predict success. But I didn't say that intelligence wasn't. I didn't say that do. intelligence Ooh. and conscientiousness. Well, you were saying that intelligence female and traits. conscientiousness by implication are not female traits. No, no. I I'm mean, not that's very dangerous that. territory. I'm not saying that at all. Are Jesus. women less intelligent than men? No, no. He's sneaky no, with it. No, the, the, the data on that's pretty clear. The average IQ for a woman and the average IQ for a man is identical. There is some debate about the flatness of the distribution, which is something that James Damore pointed out, for example, in his memo. But there's no difference at all in general cognitive ability. There's no difference to speak of in conscientiousness. Women are a bit more orderly than men, and men are a little bit more industrious than women. But the mm. difference isn't big. But all, that averages have, into conscientiousness. Plenty of men who aren't necessarily as well, industrious. Well, of course. But we'll, are, we'll, okay. we'll, but no, female but, traits, but you ask though, me why are they not... Feminine at, traits. Why are they say. not desirable at the top of... Feminine traits, why are they not desirable at the top of... Business? It's hard to say. I'm just laying out the empirical evidence. Like, we know the, we know the traits that predict success. But we also know, because companies by and large have not been dominated by women over the centuries, we have nothing to compare it to. True. It's an experiment. True, and it could be the case that if companies modified their behavior and became more feminine, that they would be successful. But you there's no evidence for it. I'm not neither doubtful nor non-doubtful. There's no evidence for it. So why not it. give it a go, as the radical feminists would Because the evidence suggests, say. well, it's fine. If, if, like, if someone wants to start a company and make it more feminine and compassionate, let's say, and caring in its overall orientation towards its workers and towards the marketplace, then that's a perfectly reasonable experiment to run. My point is that there is no evidence that those traits predict success in the workplace. And there's because plenty of evidence. Because it's never been tried. Well, that's not, that's not really the case. Women have been in the workplace for, what, at least 
ever since I've been around, the representation of women in the workplace has been about 50%. So we've run the experiment for a fair, fairly reasonable period of time, but not, you know, certainly not for centuries. Let me move on to another debate that's been very controversial for you. Um, and this is, you got in trouble for refusing to call trans men and women by their preferred personal pronouns. No, I wonder that's not actually true. I got in trouble because I said I would not follow the compelled speech dictates of the federal and provincial government. I actually never got in trouble for not calling anyone anything. Right. That, that didn't happen. You wouldn't follow the change of law, which was designed not to so was law. discrimination. No, no. Suppressive, well, but at the same time, it's kind of sneaky. To do. OK, huh. you cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Mm. Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You yes. know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the I wouldn't offend of truth. A trans Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I'm very glad that I have no, you get my, my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But you're exercising exactly your freedom you of speech to certainly risk offending me. Yes. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. Can I, like, can we, like, he's answering the questions in a very logical way. Like, if, like I don't know how I could disagree. I do agree with some of the lady's points, though. And I feel the fact that she's even arguing this in the first place is very very strong of her because bro there's so many people that'll just be quiet about this topic so i commend her so the you utmost sat there and i'm just trying i'm just trying to work that out i mean ha gotcha you have got me you have got me i'm trying to <laughs> anyway, let's go back fine. Fine. i think you, more power to you as far as i'm concerned except you haven't sat there and i'm just trying i'm just trying to work that out i mean uh, ah. gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to work well, that through time. my head. Yeah, yeah, it took a while, it took a while. It did, it did, yeah. It took a while. That was a good you saying, what you just said was, was You have voluntarily come into the studio and agreed to be questioned. Mm -hmm. A trans person in your class has come to your class and said they want to be called mm, That's sheep. never happened. And I would call them she. So you would. So you've kind of changed your tune on that. No, 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 I said that right from the beginning. What I said at the beginning was that I was not going to cede the linguistic territory to radical leftists, regardless mm. of whether or not it was put in law. That's what I said. Also... And then the people who came after me said, oh, you must be transphobic and you'd mistreat a student in your class. It's like, I never mistreated a student in my <laughs> class. I'm not transphobic. And that isn't bro, what that I said. Bro, that'd be happening, well, bro. They'd be twisting the subject, twisting I mean, everything, I mean, narrative. Well, only in the broader context of my claims that radical leftist ideologues are uh, authoritarian, yes, which they are. You're saying someone who's trying to work out their gender identity, who may well have struggled with that, had quite a no tough doubt time over the years. With it, yeah. You're comparing them with, you know, Chairman Mao, who no, just saw the, the deaths of millions of people. Well, just the even activists. if the activists, you know, they're trans people too. They have a right to say these things. Yeah, but they don't Isn't have a right to speak for their whole community. To compare them to Chairman Mao, or, you know, I could Pinochet, Augusto Pinochet. I mean, you know, this is grossly insensitive. No, I it? didn't compare them to Pinochet. Well, I did compare them to He Powell. was an authoritarian. He was a right winger, though. I was comparing them to the left wing totalitarians. Okay. And I do believe Mao, they are left wing Mao, totalitarians. Under Mao, millions of people died. Right. I mean, there's no comparison between That's... Mao and a trans activist, is there? Why not? Because trans activists aren't killing millions of people? The philosophy that's guiding their utterances is the same philosophy. The death consequences versus non death. Yet. Come on. You're saying that trans activists no. could lead to the deaths of millions of people. What no, I'm saying that the philosophy that drives their utterances is the same philosophy that already has driven us to the deaths of millions of people. Okay, tell us how that philosophy is in any way comparable. Sure, that's no problem. The first thing is, is that the philosophy presumes that group identity is paramount. That's the fundamental philosophy that drove the Soviet Union and Maoist China. And it's the fundamental philosophy of the left-wing activists. It's identity politics. It doesn't matter who you are as an individual. It matters who you are in terms of your group identity. You're just That's saying murderous. things, though, to provoke, aren't you? I mean, Not you a are bit. a provocateur. I never say You're like anything. the alt-right that you hate to be compared to. You um, want to stir things up. I'm only a provocateur insofar as when I say what I believe to be true, it's provocative. I don't provoke. 
maybe for humor don't set out now to and then. I'm not interested in provoking. But what not about the, the thing about, you know, fighting and the lobster? Tell us about the lobster. <laughs> well, that's quite a segue. Well, the first chapter I have in my it's book quite a is segue. called Stand Up Straight With Your Shoulders Back. And it's an injunction to be combative, um, not least to further your career, let's say, but also to adopt a stance of ready engagement with the world and to reflect that in your posture. And the reason that I write about lobsters is because there's this idea that hierarchical structures are a sociological construct of the Western patriarchy. And that is so untrue that it's almost unbelievable. And I use the lobster as an example because lobster. the lobster, we, we div divulged from lobsters in evolutionary history about 350 million years ago, common ancestor. And huh? lobsters exist in hierarchies <laughs> and they have a nervous system attuned to the hierarchy. And that nervous system runs on serotonin, just like our nervous systems do. And the nervous system of the lobster and the human being is so similar that antidepressants work on lobsters. And it's part of my attempt to demonstrate that the idea of hierarchy has absolutely nothing to do with sociocultural construction, which it doesn't. Let me just get this straight. You're saying that we should organize our societies along the lines of the lobsters. I'm saying that it's inevitable that there will be continuity in the way that animals and human beings organize, organize their structures. It's, it's it absolutely inevitable. And there is one third Bound of a happen. billion years of evolutionary history behind that. Right, that's, that's I gotta so long. do some research. A third of a billion years ago, there weren't even trees. Sounds it's crazy. a long time. You have a mechanism in your brain that runs on serotonin that's similar to the lobster mechanism that tracks your status. And the higher your status, the better your emotions are regulated. So as your serotonin levels increase, you feel more positive emotion and less negative emotion. So you're saying like the lobsters, we're hardwired as men and women to do certain things, to sort of run along tram lines, and there's nothing we can do about it. No, I'm not saying there's nothing we can do about it, because it's like a, in a chess game, right? There's lots of things that you can do, although you can't break the rules of the chess game and continue to play chess. And biological, your, your biological nature is somewhat like that, is it sets the rules of the game, but within those rules, you have a lot of leeway. But the idea that, but one thing we can't do is say that hierarchical organization is a consequence of the capitalist patriarchy. It's like, that's patently absurd. It's wrong. It's not a matter of opinion. It's seriously wrong. Aren't you just whipping people up into a state of anger? And not at all. Your divisions between. She's like, are you just trying to cause up, problems? Any critics of you online get absolutely lambasted by your followers. Mm -hmm. And by call me, them off, generally. You? Sorry, your critics get lambasted by you. I mean, if they're that academics, not at all. If an academic is going to come okay. after me and tell me that I'm not qualified and that I'm not, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I you're not going to say to your followers to now, quit the abuse, quit the anger. Well, we'd need some substantial examples of the abuse and the anger before I could detail that question. There's a lot of it out so, there. For, well, let, let's take a more general perspective on that. So I've had 25,000 letters since June, something like that from people who told me that I have brought them back from the brink of destruction. And so I'm perfectly willing to put that up against the rather vague accusations that my followers are making the lives of people that I've targeted miserable. Jordan Peterson, <laughs> thank you. My pleasure, Yo. nice talking with you. Yo, that was a crazy, crazy interview. I will say from the lady's perspective, I am very happy that she was able to come on here. It seemed like she was, she came very prepared, had our list of questions. She seemed like she knew what she wanted to talk about. And she made this discussion very enjoyable and watchable. And she already knew the points she wanted to attack Jordan Peterson on. It seemed like she really did already have those points. Now I will say, I don't know if this is a bad thing to say. I don't know too much about Jordan Peterson and the other content he has. But I was very impressed with him in this video. The amount of counter arguments she was throwing his way, the amount of things she was trying to say to switch his arguments and try to just throw him off of his topic and to change the things that he was actually saying. And he would bring it right back on a straight line and tell her exactly what he meant, exactly how he felt and the exact way he meant it. It was impressive. I can't lie. And she even got caught up at a point like, wow, she had to switch start talking about a lot 